Udah? Ya. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to visiting lecture today. For everyone who to so has entered the room, we're about to begin. So please have a seat and make yourself comfortable. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Honorable Dr. Sophie Alexianko as a professor, Doctor of Technical Science, Head of Medical Department from Olesen Sardinito National University from Ukraine. And a very warm welcome to the all participants and students from Stecom University. If it is in the pleasure to have all of you on this memorable occasion, and I would like to thank God for getting us here in a visiting lecture program regarding physical mechanism of icing in airplane. Before we begin, please allow me to read our agenda this afternoon. First, there will be start class presentation by Dr. Serhi. And finally, there will be a question and answer session after the presentation and continue with a brief for a photo session at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we will start for this event today delivered by Dr. Serhi Alexienko. Yeah, for doctor, the time is yours. Thank you. So I have to share my screen again, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, can you see it? Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm. Uh, yes. Thank you for <clears throat> uh, my intro uh, introducing. Yes, uh, I'm a head of mechatronic department of Lisgenshar uh, Dnipro National University. Uh, I would like to thank you for the invitation and the possibility to share with you uh, with the result of my. Uh, work my investigations uh, first of all i would like to say that uh, the problem of uh, icing is not only is actual not only for uh, aviation for airplanes by uh, and also for other uh, vehicles uh, it's this problem is actual also for wind uh, energy turbines uh, it's an actual problem, icing of wind turbines, blades, uh, in transport systems, uh, in industry. And of course, this problem can be in any uh, technical application. Uh, uh, I apologize maybe for some scientific style of this uh, lecture. Uh, I will not use any formulas uh, in this presentation. Uh, the main uh, focus is on the physical mechanism, physical uh, peculiarities of the icing process because um, some years ago I even was uh, surprised that uh, according to um, the whole meaning that uh, about the physical mechanism of, uh, air, for instance, airplanes uh, surfaces icing during the flight in uh, severe Meteor uh, meteorological conditions, uh, the experiments show shown that uh, it's somewhat uh, different. Yeah, this mechanism is different. So I think that uh, this topic, this theme will be interesting for you as well. Uh, okay. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so, <clears throat> in-flight uh, icing uh, of aircraft is recognized as a worldwide serious hazard uh, because ice secretions uh, on the aircraft surfaces are usually caused by freezing of supercooled water droplets contained in clouds. And uh, these ice secretions on the leading edges of the wings, engine lights, and other external elements of aircraft destroy smooth uh, airflow, produce higher dynamic performance degradation, and uh, finally reduce uh, the flight safety. Uh, so in order to protect the aircraft uh, during the flight in icing conditions, uh, the last one has to be equipped with anti-icing or de-icing systems. Uh, according to standards, uh, the next type of uh, taste data 
uh, are used in uh, designing of uh, ice protection systems. It's uh, natural icing uh, uh, flight taste da data, uh, tanker taste data. It's the kind of uh, flight uh, taste data, but using uh, another airplane uh, with uh, spraying liquid uh, before the tested uh, plane. Also, it's da data that can be obtained using icing tunnel, uh, ground icing tunnel. And uh, finally, uh, using uh, this data can be obtained using icing uh, simulation analytical tools or icing codes. Uh, the last one allows to provide investigation in a wider parameter range and also to reduce the time and the cost of development process of uh, anti-icing systems. Uh, up to recent times, uh, there has been developed a series of uh, mathematical models, the most known uh, Liu Ice, Anera, Trejais, and uh, uh, a lot of others. And uh, these models um, mostly describe the surface icing process uh, using uh, the uh, method of uh, control volume, surface control volumes. Uh, and this method is based uh, on so-called Messenger approach. Uh, according to this approach, uh, ice is formed on the streamlined surface and unfrozen water flows down this ice in form of a film. Uh, the amount of liquid that flows out of the control volume was determined by frozen fraction received from mass and heat balances for this control volume. Uh, in case the amount of precipitating liquid is not enough uh, to cover uh, the entire surface with the continuous film, so liquid on the surface exists in the form of separate drops. These drops can grow, partially freeze, and after they reach some maximum height, they start to spread under the influence of aerodynamic forces. So this is um, mm, uh, this is the hypothesis uh, uh, that uh, is used in the mm, gen generally used in uh, such uh, methodologies. Uh, how uh, if we consider it. Uh, more careful, yeah, uh, we can notice that uh, there is a certain contradiction in the heat balance of for control volume, whether it's a film, drops, or maybe rivulets. Uh, so you can see here the main uh, heat fluxes in this process. So we can notice that <clears throat> uh, the basic cooling uh, by means of convection and evaporation takes place uh, from the warmer uh, external surface of liquid, whereas uh, the phase transition front moves from below. Uh, there is also another question regarding spatial ice water structure formed during the transition of supercooled liquid into the thermodynamic equilibrium. So whereas it influences uh, the movement of liquid and how. Uh, thus, within the proposed mathematical model, we are facing several key questions, the answer to which directly influence the form of modeled ice uh, accretions. So, what is the actual mechanism of movement of unfrozen liquid down the streamlined surface? How the front of phase transition is moving? And what happens at a stagnation point? because the airflow is minimal and the amount of precipitating water is maximum in this region. So this question, these questions are particularly topical in case uh, of flight in um, SLD conditions with uh, presence of supercooled uh, uh, large super, uh, super large droplets, because uh, uh, in these conditions, uh, uh, liquid water content uh, in the incoming uh, flow uh, is uh, large and understanding of water movement mechanism is especially important in this case. Uh, 
So the search for the answers uh, was in the basis of the uh, further experimental investigations. And some years ago, I uh, uh, took part uh, uh, of the ICNDI SIN team of uh, Technical University of Braunschweig, and uh, we conducted some uh, experiments. Uh, generally, we conducted three series of experiments. The first one about the general structure of um, ice and accretions on the streamlined surfaces. Uh, the second series was about uh, investigation, the mechanism of freezing of supercooled water uh, that, contain, that was uh, contained in a surface drop. And the third one was about the investigation of the process of interaction of incoming supercooled water droplets with streamlined surface, with uh, ice, icing, icing streamlined surface. Uh, the experimental facility that we used, so that was uh, an open type wind tunnel with uh, the test uh, section with sizes 0 0.45 uh, per 0 0.45 meters with uh, and uh, it was equipped to this Eiffel type chamber. Uh, the, two, uh, the facility was also equipped with spray system and was fully uh, housed into thermal uh, insulated chamber with uh, internal dimensions of uh, three per three per uh, uh, eight meters. Uh, the specimen was an aluminum NACA 0015 profile with uh, 0 0.3 meter long cord uh, with just one nozzle working. It was possible to get good photographic data of icing process. Uh, the diameter of uh, the droplets were determined visually from uh, these uh, photo images. Uh, the icing process was recorded with a high-speed camera. That camera was equipped with a micro lens. Uh, so one square millimeter of actual size corresponded to uh, 250 pixels. So this allowed us to analyze a generated video image and monitor the behavior of droplets with the size of 20 micrometers and more. So on this slide, uh, you can see the experimental parameters. Uh, on this slide, uh, so the results of our experiments, uh, we can see how the supercooled uh, surface drop uh, freeze, uh, is freezing. So this is a spontaneous, a spontaneous freezing of supercooled water droplet. Uh, it was settled on the cold aluminum plate and we can see how this uh, preliminary structure with milky white color appears uh, Uh, also, we can notice this, uh, if you can see uh, this uh, image um, well, this uh, moving boundary that we can see like a difference, optical, optical difference uh, also. Uh, so analysis, uh, this uh, experimental data, uh, we can conclude that uh, the process of freezing of supercooled water can be divided into three uh, phases or stages. Uh, the first and second stages involving the formation of a cloud ice water structure distributed over the droplet volume and the preceding stage of preliminary warming of the droplet uh, mm, be suggested to mm, to take into account this uh, preliminary phase uh, because we didn't uh, see any information about that in some previous investigations or scientific uh, uh, articles so um, so we noticed it uh, yes uh, this process uh, uh, the time of this process was about 0 0.035 seconds in the condition of our experiment 
And uh, the second stage was, or sorry, the third stage was water droplet freezing from the side of uh, this cold aluminum plate with a clearly distinguished uh, interface boundary. And the time or the duration of this process was about three seconds. Uh, next uh, slide shows, uh, firstly, uh, the observation of the process of interaction in common droplet with uh, streamlined surface uh, with uh, positive uh, temperatures, so without any freezing. Uh, we combined uh, photographic data that we uh, uh, that we uh, uh, that we had uh, from a high speed camera and uh, had some uh, like video images, but with uh, but zoomed and uh, slowed down. Uh, that's why we can observe uh, and to find some interesting uh, moving, yeah, some interesting behavior of uh, droplets and to analyze this physical peculiarities of this process. Uh, so, if we scale up and slow down the image, we can see that uh, the liquid in the stagnation point is moving down the surface due to, so analyzing this data, splashing or jumping, so called, uh, movement of droplets uh, on the surface during the merger due to the kinetic energy of incoming drop. We can see how splashes jump away from the streamlined surface to certain distance. We can see it here on these images and uh, more slowly here. Uh, so um, on uh, after that, on one hand, they lose their kinetic energy. And on the other hand, they get into the area of higher air velocity and are caught and carried away by the external flow. Uh, during the direct heat of the droplet to the surface drop, the amount of splashed liquid may be even bigger than the amount of liquid that the droplet itself contains. That is why over time, the volume of liquid uh, on the surface does not increase, the film fails to form, and separate surface drops appear instead. Mm, on some distance from stagnation line in this region, this, yeah, uh, liquid on the surface is moving as follows. A droplet from the external flow hits the surface drop and brings it to motion uh, by its kinetic energy splashing partially and forming so-called cascades or streamlet of moving liquid, uh, losing a significant volume of water with splashing or separating drops. So such a cascade stops downstream and takes the shape of a surface drop again. Uh, a separate, uh, so here we can see this, uh, one uh, one uh, or event with one or sp splashing or interaction with one incoming droplet. Uh, and uh, analyzing this data, we can propose to divide uh, this process into three phases. The first one is a collapse uh, that takes uh, time uh, less than two per 10 to the power of minus six seconds. The second phase is expansion of this so-called pancake and uh, an intensive splashing before the completion of expansion with the time around two per 10, into, uh, 10 to the power of minus uh, four seconds. And the third stage is contraction, so liquid tightens and takes the shape of uh, surface drop. The time of this process is around four per 10 to the power of minus three seconds. Uh, during its deformation, a droplet can merge with other surface drop. Such an uh, interaction mechanism explains the reason why the liquid exists on the surface in the form of a separate drop, drops located at uh, a considerable distance from, um, uh, from one another. Uh, uh, next uh, next uh, experiments uh, were conducted at um, negative temperatures and uh, uh, on this slide we can see or we can observe the icing process evolution at the initial stage so we had a clean 
uh, streamlined surface and uh, the first the first uh, how this physics in this first time uh, so we can see these separate eyes so-called hillocks so surface drops uh, uh, they formed uh, uh, which formed uh, on the surface uh, of the wing they freeze on the side of a wing surface with the negative temperature as the heat conductivity at this point at this moment is the most significant uh, we can notice that their behavior is considerably different from the one that we can observe at positive temperatures they are more resilient do not uh, spread like pancakes then over time we can see it in this image uh, a number of uh, frozen droplet drops is uh, increasing. They cover the entire surface and grow in size. The liquid starts moving down this surface. You can see it here. Uh, this surface downstream from the frontal part of the airfoil. Uh, in order to better understanding of the process, I prepared some schematic schematic images yeah so we can see this uh, initial uh, surface drops uh, then uh, they are growing and some drops are freezing uh, some drops in the area of stagnation point are big enough for deforming or spreading and there is enough water in the area of stagnation point for filling all spaces between ice hills uh, in this, uh, uh, so it, it is necessary to notice, uh, to, 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 to emphasize that uh, generally this, um, this physics can be different uh, depending on temperature and uh, amount of uh, moisture. Uh, uh, so if... Uh, uh, so at a rather low envi environmental temperature and water content, unfrozen water does not reach the end of this original yeah, hilly surface. Uh, dry hills start uh, catching the drops from the outer flow and growing in uh, from a separate needles or columns, so-called, forming uh, and uh, forming uh, mm, so-called rime ice. And, and the contrary, in case when water content is higher and temperature tends to freezing point zero, ice and water may cover the entire surface of the wing and remaining and frozen water will flow down the entire surface of the wing and fall into outer flow from the trailing edge. Uh, but uh, generally, mm, or mostly, uh, the, the icing process uh, mm, uh, usually uh, can be observed something uh, uh, absolutely like uh, on this on this scheme. Yeah. Uh, then uh, on on the slide in seat uh, on on this slide uh, shows the image of the ice accretion that formed uh, at a temperature of minus ten degrees Celsius during sixty seconds after the beginning of the icing, and then we analyzed the structure and divided it into nine uh, elements or nine. Uh, uh, figures, uh, yeah, this is the same uh, picture, but uh, divided into nine parts. And analyzing this data, we can see that in the vicinity of the stagnation point, the ice surface is smooth with small, this uh, bumpless roughness with 0 0.5 millimeter height and up to two millimeter diameter at the base. Then, uh, on some distance uh, from the stagnation point, roughness becomes more distinct uh, and then uh, passes into larger ridges uh, with uh, one, two millimeters height. And also we can see uh, on the fragment three, uh, the point of roughness transition into ridges. Yeah, we can uh, hear it clearly. And then uh, these uh, ridges uh, are uh, increasing yeah? uh, and start to catch by their uh, upsides uh, uh, the dro incoming droplets and start to uh, to grow fast 
and uh, to form so-called ice needles or columns. And then uh, the distance between the, the, these columns, columns uh, is uh, increasing. And between them, we can see that uh, original uh, ice in surface that we uh, discussed on the first slide uh, uh, dedicated to the investigation with negative temperatures. Yeah? And then uh, at the end uh, of icing area, area, as a result of uh, decreased volume of precipitating mo moisture, the size of uh, ice elements and their number shrinks, the distance between them grows, and the areas of clean wing surface are seen between them. Uh, Next, uh, yeah, uh, this uh, on this uh, slide we can see. Uh, sorry, is it okay? Mm -hmm. Is it okay with the connection? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh -huh, thank you. Yes. Uh, so in this uh, slide we can see. Um, uh, the data that uh, also demonstrate uh, this previous uh, uh, this previous investigation uh, in uh, so what is uh, what is the um, inner yeah mechanism of the interaction in this uh, area uh, this area and this area. Yeah? Uh, so uh, it's uh, this is uh, um, images or the result that was obtained for negative temperature minus 10 minus 15 degrees Celsius. So uh, at the stagnation point, the surface is relatively smooth. Then smooth zone ice water uh, surface becomes more bumpy. Then transition point, so bumps become more pointed, unfrozen water between them exists, but it does not move along the surface. Uh, and uh, rough zone, mm, so bumps are sharp and large, becoming the size of the columns. Uh, unfrozen water between them is almost unexist. Uh, next slide, uh, so I tried to, uh, to, to discover uh, how uh, the structure is changing with time. Unfortunately, we didn't receive data for the wide range of parameters. However, uh, available data for data for minus 10 degrees for 20th and 60th seconds allow to presume that generally the structure does not change considerably. Uh, together with this, uh, roughness becomes slightly more distinct. So we can see it on this slide, in these images. Uh, uh, the following group of slides demonstrates uh, interaction of incoming droplets with uh, ice and surface in stagnation point region at different temperatures. So here and on the next series of slides, the video below uh, shows uh, more detail and slower the interaction with uh, one drop. So uh, uh, this is the separate event on interaction with one droplet. And uh, also schematic images given for better understanding. Uh, so we can see that uh, at relatively small negative temperatures, icing surface in the stagnation region is characterized by ice ridges with water in the uh, form of so-called puddles between them. Uh, flow rate is small in the stagnation area and the main mechanism of water movement on the surface is splashing and jumping. Obviously, the, the conclusion can be made that the grow, uh, growth of ice and freezing of liquid occurs because of a more significant cooling of the ice on the tops of these ridges, so-called, since uh, the speed of the coming flow and correspondingly the convection heat transfer is higher there. Uh, at lower temperatures, in our case, it was minus five degrees Celsius, uh, visible that the tops are hard, so uh, the ice pumps become considerably larger. Unfrozen liquid is in the dips between them, which starts moving when the drop hits the puddle, and the amount of splashing, or splashing water is even bigger 
than that contained in their drop. Uh, apparently, icing takes place in bumps and in the dips uh, from the side of the ice, just like in the previous case. Uh, when uh, uh, the incoming droplet directly hits the bump, it is simply splashed, uh, partially remaining and freezing on the uh, bump. Uh, at minus 10, a uh, bigger amount of uh, incoming water freezes, respectively smaller amount of it is splashed. We can observe that during collision, the drops is, uh, is uh, first flattened out, spreads about, splashing out, splashing out partially. Then it uh, gather, uh, gathers or tightens, uh, forming a surface drop. At uh, lower temperatures, uh, in our case, it was minus 20. Uh, incoming droplets takes place even faster. Sometimes the drop freezes to the base even without splashing. So we can see this event even without splashing in this video. Uh, yeah, uh, this slide is just to, to, uh, to, to show together all these four cases in order to understand better this uh, physics, this ph physical peculiarities. The, the differences of this process uh, uh, versus temperature. And schematically the same. So we can analyze. Uh, so we received, uh, we made an, uh, and we analyzed it and we made an assumption that uh, the heat exchange and movement of the front of phase transition in the stagnation point takes place in the following way. At small negative temperatures, roughness, uh, at stagnation point is small. This is due to the fact that convective heat exchange in this case is not so intensive. Uh, there is a lot of unfrozen water splashes. That's why ridges draw not so intensively. At lower temperatures, in our case, it was minus five. So these ridges start growing more uh, actively. Cooling of tops is more intensive. Roughness is increasing. Water is in cavities between the ridges. Uh, then, uh, in case of uh, further decrease in temperatures, in, in minus 10, minus 15, uh, the share of frozen water rises, so there is uh, less water left, and uh, it is mainly part of uh, water from drop that splashes, and the precipitated water freezes faster. And... Uh, this uh, in case minus 20, uh, it freezes almost instantly, instantly without even splashing, uh, whereas roughness decreases. Uh, we can also make a conclusion that uh, at uh, the entire range of temperatures in the region of stagnation point, water is moving on the surface only by means of splashing and jumping. Film of streamline uh, of uh, oh, streamlets are not uh, registered. Next, uh, uh, next uh, slides uh, start to the group of uh, uh, results uh, uh, of uh, investigation in some distance from stagnation point. Uh, it was at the distance of some 10% of court lands from the stagnation line for the 20th second after the beginning of icing process. So in case of relatively small negative temperatures, significant amount of water is observed on the uh, ice sur surface. Uh, the ice surface is notably bumpy. Uh, the surface water takes a complex shape of discontinuous film covering the ice ridges. Uh, liquid on the surface is moving by means of both aerodynamic forces. In our case, it was relatively small and regular movement with the velocity of 0 0.1 meters per second. And the droplets coming from the outer flow, uh, so fast local movement with addition of water from a droplet with the velocity uh, about one meter per second, as well as by means of splashing and jumping uh, of liquid with the velocity about uh, from five till 20 meters per second. So um, 
we can see this regu regular slow movement. Uh, then uh, we can see this uh, uh, one event of splashing uh, that this additional volume contains in droplet uh, brings it kinetic energy and this uh, amount of water uh, during this splashing start to move. And also, okay, of course, we can see this splashing and because of that, um, some uh, amount of water just jump yeah, uh, with the velocity of five or 20 meters per second in our experiment. Uh, then this uh, minus five degrees Celsius, the stagnation, oh, sorry, the situation is similar. Bumps become, but bumps become, bumps, I think bumps become a, a little larger. Uh, a little less of unfrozen uh, liquid is left. Uh, in case of uh, decrease in temperature up to minus 10 in our experiment, ice roughness becomes more significant. Uh, there is less liquid on the surface and its movement is hampered under the action of aerodynamic forces. And uh, with the further decline in environmental temperature, the amount of unfrozen water is reduced. Water no longer moves under the action of aerodynamic forces. Separate bumps are growing. They catch uh, drops from uh, the flow and become uh, the basis uh, for a further formation of this large uh, number of ice needles that we observed on the uh, general uh, when, when we um, observed this uh, general structure of ice uh, uh, of this uh, the structure of uh, uh, ice secretions on the streamlined surface. Uh, on the next slide, uh, also I collected these four cases uh, in one place, just in order to understand better this physics, how it changes with the temperature, and also the um, schematic image. So it is necessary to say that in some distance from stagnation area, a uh, transition from uh, a relatively smooth icy uh, surface uh, to a more bumpy one can be observed uh, and further transition to the structure uh, consisting from uh, separate icy elements uh, in the form of uh, needles or columns is also visible. So um, the main conclusions that can be made uh, as a result, um, in order to, to answer the questions about that we uh, said before, or in the first uh, part of the presentation. So the freezing process of the surface liquid proceeds into, in two stages, uh, a relatively fast formation of ice water structure, presumably in the bounce droplets after interaction with uh, uh, the streamlined surface and also in the holes between the ice hills and slower complete freezing from the side of the already existing ice uh, on the surface of the hills uh, at the bottom of the puddles. And these hills play the role of cold bridges in the uh, process of uh, heat exchange and uh, schematically Mm, it is shown in this slide. Uh, and uh, the next uh, thing is the uh, liquid uh, on the surface is moving by means of both, uh, of both aerodynamic forces, relatively slow and regular movement, and the droplets coming uh, from the outer flow, fast local movement with additional water from a droplet, as well as by means of splashing and jumping of liquid. Uh, uh, movement uh, of liquid in the area of stagnation point takes place only due to splashing with further sedimentation and the entire temperature range. Uh, presumab uh, presumably the described mechanism of ice growing is also uh, 
true for higher airflow velocity, smaller droplets and low liquid water content. And uh, it, uh, this mechanism can explain uh, uh, the mechanism of uh, formation of so-called horns, which uh, are characteristic of uh, the glaze ice shapes. Also, photographic observations produce only um, qualitative representation of the icing process. Um, nevertheless, it is a step forward to the better understanding of the icing process microphysics. And the results of this work can be used for the improvement of the existing mathematical icing models or uh, the development of new ones. And uh, also these results uh, can be useful in other applications, in wind, in energy, wind turbine, turbine and energy, in transport and other industrial applications. So thank you for your attention. Uh, maybe um, you will have some questions about that. Thank you so much for Dr. Serhi. Yeah, for everyone, for all audience, if you wanna ask question, you can raise your hand or you can write in the room chat. I'm sorry. Okay, for first question, we have audience from the YouTube. From Ms. Diarami, when and what time actually the procedure for the physical mechanism on the Europla here working? Is it on the storage station of the airplane of, or when flying on the air? I'm ready right in the room chat. Uh, yeah, if I understand if I understand the question correctly, uh, uh, no, uh, no, di directly uh, the uh, parameters uh, of our experiment they correspond to the flying. Uh, uh, it's a real uh, it uh, uh, according to the standards according to the investigations and tables uh, data. Uh, official data uh, corresponds to the uh, conditions of supercooled water droplets that can can uh, we can uh, have it on uh, uh, alt uh, for altitudes from 500 oh, sorry uh, uh, yes from 500 uh, meters uh, up to three kilometers uh, and these uh, mm, parameters correspond to the small airplanes or UAVs or something like that uh, but uh, as I said uh, we uh, make uh, uh, we presume that uh, it this mechanism will be also uh, true for higher temper for higher velocity and lower liquid water content, so it can be uh, uh, it can be fair for uh, mechanism that uh, for for a big airplanes uh, as well. Uh, and uh, of course, these uh, experiments was con was conduct were conducted at uh, ground uh, ground conditions in the wind uh, wind. Uh, uh, winter uh, wind to uh, tunnel. Uh, mm, yeah, there are some some mm, some peculiarities, maybe some different from natural icing tests, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it it can be relevant. Okay, thank you for answering, and. Uh...
And then the next question, this is from Ms. Sukamto. Yes, you are absolutely right. That uh, it's uh, also very uh, actual problem. Uh, icing of uh, agent inlets and uh, carburetor uh, icing. Uh, this result also can be fair for this situation as well, but uh, mm, uh, in this sense, uh, carburetor can be iced even uh, with positive temperatures plus plus uh, five and even plus ten because of uh, aerodynamic because of aerodynamic uh, peculiarities of the flow. Uh, the temperature uh, in, inside of the carburetor, uh, carburetor can be lower than uh, environmental temperature. So, so it's uh, an actual problem. And maybe the mechanism of icing of uh, deposition of liquid is a little bit different than in this presentation. And another mathematical model uh, has to be used uh, in this case. Uh, but it is a little bit uh, out from the topic of this presentation. This is the next uh, step, mathematical modeling. Okay, thank you. I think very clear answer from Professora. Maybe for our audience, if you wanna ask question again, we can wait. Think. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have participant with the recent from Mr. Adi Nugroho. Yeah, for Mr. Adi, the time is yours. I would like to ask about the icing icing problem. Icing problem uh, in the sensor of airplane. Because I see on the uh film and the and the documentary air air uh, uh air crash invest investigation from national geographic uh, there is a problem usually on the on the uh, pitot table a uh, pitot on the sensor for the on the sensor for the altimeter and the speed of airplane and how to uh, to the ice the part of this small part on the pitot tube of the airplane and that's my uh, my question yes. I like air crash in the investigation that's a very good documentary okay yes. uh, that's my question yes thank you for your question uh, it, it's my opinion uh, the icing of pitot tube it's a very it's a very dangerous for airplanes very dangerous uh, and uh, the icing system uh, just has to prevent this uh, icing and uh, as far as I, uh, as far as i know uh, the heat uh, the the, um, the, uh, the method uh, is uh, the method that used is a heating electrical heating of this mm. tube just, uh, just like this one and uh, I'm not sure that it is a good idea to use some other methods uh, to 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 save energy or something like that because it's too dangerous, it's my, in my opinion. Mm. Okay, uh, thank you for the answer. Thank you. Okay, I think we don't have no more question again. And I will go to, to the next session for them take a picture. Yeah, for everyone, please open your camera. I will take a picture for documentation. Ya, bagi para peserta bisa dihidupkan kameranya terlebih dahulu untuk mengambil gambar bersama.
Okay, I will count of one, two, and three. Once again, one, two, three. Smile. Okay, thank you. Finally, we come to the end of visiting lecture today. We would like to say thanks again for Dr. Serhi for their wonderful information. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for all audience. And I hope we can meet again in another event in the future. Also, I would like to thanks for all participants for attending this class and making this class more interesting at least we hope to have more collaboration in the future with dr serhi yeah maybe from dr serhi you will say something before for closing this event yes thank you very much for the invitation yes i hope for the future uh, collaboration as well maybe uh, to take part in some international uh, grants uh, competitions so I'll do that. Okay, thank you so much for coming for today, Mr. Serhi. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the visiting lecture for today and here we hope to see you soon. Thank you and have a nice day for all students. Yeah, nice to see you, doctor. Yes. Nice to see you. Goodbye. Yes, goodbye. It's okay. Bye. Huh? Yeah, okay. I think that's enough for today's event. Thank you. Good afternoon. Have a good rest. Bye bye.